Hello everyone, today we're talking about spectrophotometry. What you're looking at right now is a CMP or a complete metabolic panel of a patient. And you can see that there are uh, laboratory results here, there are numbers, um, there are flags next to it. Some of them are low and others look like they're normal. Um, we're not talking about the interpretation of that today. What we're talking about is how do we actually get this and why uh, does specimen integrity really matter, okay? So the first thing that you need to know is that when a specimen is collected, it needs to go immediately to the laboratory. The reason being because there needs to be um, lack of cellular metabolism that's happening. Uh, whenever you draw a, a tube of blood, the cells don't know to stop eating and breathing. <laughs> so um, since we don't have any way of telling them that, uh, we need to make sure that we deliver the specimen to the lab as soon as possible so that those changes that happen from them eating and living are not going to really affect the, the diagnostic picture that we see in the laboratory of the patient. So the whole purpose of doing any diagnostic testing and using the specimens that you have are to mimic what's happening in the patient. So with that being said, we're going to talk about how does this process actually work. So we're going to talk about um, basically a focus on chemistry. Um, so a specimen comes into the lab and then we spin it down, we centrifuge it. And you can watch a video on that. And the reason we do that is to separate those uh, cells out from the liquid portion of the blood so that we slow that metabolism down, okay? If this was a serum separator tube, there would be a gel in the middle and it would perform a physical barrier um, so that there is no <laughs> contact between the liquid portion and the cells because we don't want those cells eating anymore, okay? <clears throat> So once uh, we put the tube onto the analyzer, there is a specimen probe that comes and it goes into the specimen and it's gonna pull out a certain amount. And what it's going to do with that is put it into a cuvette, okay? There is also a reagent probe that goes into a reagent bottle. Oh, that's terrible. Whew. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's kept on the analyzer. It pulls out the reagent and it's going to put that reagent into the cuvette with the patient's serum, okay? This mixture is mixed, okay? This concoction is mixed so that um, there is a great opportunity for the reagent to interact with whatever is in the patient's blood. Okay, and so um, once that mixing is done, that cuvette is then taken to an incubator. Incubation is done at body temperature, which is 37 degrees Celsius, and it's done for a certain amount of time, and that's different for every single um, manufacturer's uh, reagents or testing platform on an analyzer, there's a lot that goes into play with that, okay? And after the incubation is done, then we take that cuvette to the spectrophotometer or photometer area of that chemistry analyzer, okay? The light ends up getting shined through the cuvette that has that mixture in it. And it goes and it gets read by a sensor, okay? Now, what we end up looking for is transmittance and absorbance. So if there's 100% transmittance, that means 100% of the light went through and then that would then equal 0% absorbance, okay? It would also be zero concentration of whatever it was that you were looking for. Well, what we didn't talk about was what is actually in this reagent. So um, 
depending on the type of testing that you're doing, instead of having a liquid reagent, you might have a cuvette that is lined um, with the initial reagent. So you might have a cuvette that is lined with little antibodies to whatever analyte that you're looking for. And when the um, patient's serum is put in there, the patient's antigen gets found, and then this liquid reagent ends up being a secondary reagent, which supplies a conjugate antibody that is tagged with a light producing tag if it's exposed to light. Okay, and so that's what's happening here. We'll just say that that's what's happening here. Okay, so if we keep this in mind and we send light through this cuvette and there is 100% transmittance and 0% absorbance, that means that there wasn't anything that we were looking for in there. So say as part of the CMP that we were looking at, if we were looking for chloride. Uh, no, that's a bad example because that's the wrong methodology. Um, outside of the electrolytes, photo uh, spectrophotometry is what's used. So let's say glucose or albumin, okay? Um, let's say albumin because everybody talks about glucose. Uh, so if, if we got 0% absorbance, that means there was zero um, albumin in there because these complexes end up blocking light. All right, so there would be absorbance. So let's talk about that then. If we had 50% absorbance, we would end up with 50% transmittance. And this absorbance would then translate using the, excuse me, the analyzer's computer into a concentration. of whatever analyte you're looking for. So we were talking about albumin, okay? So let's go to the spectrophotometer that we use in our classroom and talk about how we're going to do that in class. All right, so this is the Genesis 20. The first thing you wanna do when you come into class is make sure to turn it on because it takes 15 minutes to warm up. All right, um, you'll have to remove the cover, turn it on, and then wait 15 minutes. So make sure you do that first. What you get um, welcomed with is the absorbance screen, okay? And it's showing you the wavelength of light that is being passed through the sample if you use the setting and how much of absorbance um, there is. Now, In order to make sure that it's accurate, we need to make sure to blank this, uh, this reading, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the concentration screen, okay? That's indicated by the C. And I want to change my um, wavelength. I'm going to change it to 540. Actually, I'm gonna change it to 539 just because I feel like it. Um, all right, now the spectrophotometer is using visible light in order to figure out the concentration of whatever analyte in the patient's specimen. So um, you don't uh, need to worry about anything outside of that when you're being asked a question. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do um, after this is we're going to blank the uh, analyzer. Now, we are we use uh, plastic tubes with colored water in it as to um, mimic a specimen uh, visually. However, usually you would use a glass cuvette or glass uh, glass tubes, and you want to make sure that they're not uh, <clears throat> scratched or have any dust on them because you don't want the light to be falsely um, jumping off of the tube because of scratches. Okay, so this is just uh, tap water, 
okay and it is in a covered tube so we're going to put that in there this is going to be our blank see this arrow here it's pointing in the direction that the light is going so here is where the light source is coming from and it's going to go over to here okay all right so notice it still has a concentration all right, what we're going to do is press the zero absorbance and 100% transmittance to blank this or zero it. And look, now it's at zero. That's perfect. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to test something that we don't expect to have any transmittance at all, okay? Because we would expect to have a high concentration of whatever analyte uh, is that we're looking for in this one uh, because light should not travel through here. It's so, so dark, okay? Between every uh, measurement that you do, make sure you close the uh, top of the analyzer. So I'm going to press the ATC, okay? So there's absorbance, and then you can press it again to find transmittance. So let's put this specimen in here all right so we put that in and now we see that we have a lot of absorption absorption right let's go to the transmittance zero percent transmittance okay so a hundred percent of the light was absorbed so that means um even if you saw it on there it said greater than four uh, that could mean that in the chemistry lab we may need to do a dilution because the uh, reading might have been outside the analyzer's capability without having a dilution done. So, hey, there is another class period um, that we've talked about. All right, let's try a different one. Let's try something a little lighter. Okay, we have some orange here. Let's check that out. Okay, so we have a little bit of absorb, uh, sorry, of transmittance here. Let's see absorption. Okay, so that's pretty high. Let's go to another one. Let's try, let's try green. Okay, so absorption here is less than one. And then we have 36.9% um, transmittance. And so, oops, I apologize, I pressed the wrong button. Um, here, the concentration you see is 0.433. That should match the absorption, okay? So in this case, there would be, um, a computer inside of the analyzer that would then take the absorbance and absorption and um, calculate that into an actual concentration of an analyte. Okay, so like we said before, um, there would be albumin and uh, this would look at the normal range and the uh, clinical reportable range and analytical measurable range and be able to calculate where this um, this analysis falls in. All right, I hope that was helpful and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.